Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of 30 Albums for 30 Years, 1964 through 1994. I am your host, Jay Sweet, and in today's episode, we will be taking a look at the Beach Boys All Summer Long, released on Capitol Records July 13th, 1964. It was recorded between April 2nd and May 19th, 1964, except for one track, which is Drive-In, which was recorded on October 18th, 1963. Let's get into it, the Beach Boys, all summer long. Okay, so the Beach Boys. Well, the surviving Beach Boys are now more like beach great grandpas. But at one time, they were extremely popular young hit makers who helped shape American popular music and culture. The Beach Boys formed in 1961 in Hawthorne, California. The original lineup included Brian Wilson, his brothers Carl and Dennis, cousin Mike Love, and Brian's friend Al Jardine. And the group was managed by Wilson's dad, Murray. Under Brian Wilson's direction, the Beach Boys worked hard on vocal harmonies, drawing influence from the many 50s doo-wop groups they heard as youths. They showcased their signature vocal styling by singing pop tunes about surfing, girls, cars, and fun, fun, fun. The group's first single was Surfing, which was released in 1961 on Candix record. It became a regional hit. And in 1962, things began to explode for the group when they signed with Capitol Records and released their first album, Surfing Safari, which peaked at number 32 in 1963. Also in 1963, the boys released three popular albums, Surfing USA, Surfing Girl, and Little Deuce Coop. Moving into 1964, the Beach Boys were riding a massive wave of success, and they released albums like Shut Down Volume 2, All Summer Long, Four by the Beach Boys, The Beach Boys Concert, and The Beach Boys Christmas Album. That's a lot of Beach Boys for one year. Despite the group's success and continued interest in what now became a winning formula, Brian Wilson was not happy riding the same old wave. He felt threatened by the British invasion bands and the undeniable talents of the Beatles. In response, Wilson wanted to change the group's sound to turn the Beach Boys into Beach Men. By the year's end, the pressure got to him and Brian stopped touring with the group and began suffering panic attacks. Also, Murray was relieved as the group's manager, although he did remain a close advisor. The album that most exemplified the beginnings of a new direction for the Beach Boys was All Summer Long, which charted at number four on the Billboard charts. It was the first album to start to incorporate themes that were not only related to surfing and cars and girls and beachy kind of things. It was also one of the first concept albums with pieces that drew from Wilson's experiences as a typical Southern California teenager. For the album, Brian Wilson spent a great deal of attention showcasing stronger harmonies and more advanced arranging characteristics. While discussing the album, Brian Wilson mentions the following. We need to grow. Up to this point, we milked every idea dry. We did every possible angle about surfing and then did the car routine. But we needed to grow artistically. This change in direction would result in two of the Beach Boys' most creative efforts following all summer long which include the albums Today, 1965, and the masterpiece Pet Sounds. But it all began with this record all summer long. All right, cats, let's drop the needle on side number one. Track number one is I Get Around, which is the signature piece from the record. The lyrics are considered autobiographical, relating to the group's reaction to fame and the stress of finding new places and sounds to continue to connect to their audiences. It was the group's first number one hit and Brian Wilson's finest effort to date as an orchestrator and arranger. The song includes strong harmonies and a multitude of instruments, including timbales, a six-string bass guitar played by session master Glenn Campbell, 
tenor saxophone, a baritone saxophone, a harpsichord, and a Hammond organ. It's easy to miss all of these intricacies uh, with this song and a lot of the Beach Boys music, but it is these details that make for a pretty remarkable achievement for pop music, and particularly the song I Get Around. The song was a game changer for the group and a game changer for popular music. I Get Around. Track number two is All Summer Long, which was written by Brian Wilson and Mike Love. It was released as a single in the UK, but did not chart highly. Their lyrics reflect a groovy summer experience and a wardrobe that includes t-shirts, cutoffs, and a pair of thongs. Listen for marimbas, a tenor saxophone, and a piccolo or maybe a fife in this one. Through these quirky orchestrations and arrangement characteristics, Brian Wilson was really proving that he was the real deal. And that pop music didn't have to be simple and formulaic to be likable and digestible. This next track is Hushabye, which was a cover of the Mystics' 1959 doo-wop hit. There are some impressive vocal layerings on this one, and it's one of the finest examples of vocal writing and pop music from the time. That's what the Beach Boys were great at. Lyrically, it's a perfect song for any speech therapist teaching the sounds oohs and ahs. Track number four is Little Honda which sounds like a commercial for the merits of the nimble Honda scooter, which the Beach Boys were a fan of. No Harley Davidsons for these beach bums. Although not a hit for the Beach Boys, the U.S. surf rock band The Hondells scored a top 10 hit with the song and named their first LP Little Honda that was on Mercury Records. They were all in on the Honda experience, apparently. It's kind of a goofy tune, but it is made palatable by Brian Wilson's arranging and production brilliance. Let's take a ride on the little Honda. The next track is Will Run Away, which was written by Brian Wilson and frequent early collaborator Gary Usher. The song is a doo-wop style ballad about a young couple eloping. The tune represents a shift in lyrical content for the Beach Boys, showing a certain seriousness that had nothing to do with beaches or cars or surfboards. Take notice of the heavy use of the church organ on this one. It's one of the finest album tracks, Will Run Away. The final track of side one on the original LP is Carl's Big Chance, which is an instrumental track meant to showcase Carl Wilson's guitar playing. It's played in the then popular instrumental surf rock format, which offers trebly guitars with a good amount of echo and slap back effect. Here it goes, Carl's Big Chance. Take it away, Carl. All right, guys, flip the record and drop the needle on side number two, track number one, and the song is Wendy, which is about a cheating girlfriend. Brian Wilson named his second child Wendy. Not sure why he would name his child after a cheating girlfriend who made him cry when she made it with another guy. Wendy Wilson found her own fame as a member of the 1990s pop group Wilson Phillips. The song Wendy offers some advanced harmonies, and a well-crafted key change. You can also hear a cough or a sneeze at around a minute and 20 seconds, and some light chatter behind the organ solo. Wendy is an incredibly layered piece for the time, and the song was originally credited to only Brian Wilson, but Mike Love sued Wilson for shared rights to the piece, and his name was added. The song peaked at number 44 on the Billboard charts. The 
Do you remember all the guys who gave us rock and roll? Well, the Beach Boys do. And this song, Do You Remember, which is a tribute to 1950s rockers like Little Richard, Chuck Berry, and Elvis Presley. One of the more interesting mentions is that of Danny and the Juniors, a Philadelphia doo-wop band that scored the hit At The Hop. It's really cool when a song's lyrics make mention of the past. The third track of side two is Girls on the Beach, which is another brilliant display of polyphonic harmony singing and one of the last songs that Brian Wilson would write with a beach theme. The song inspired and was included in the film The Girls on the Beach, which was released in 1965 from Paramount. Track four of side two is Drive-In, which celebrates the group's love of the drive-in movies and the make-out culture surrounding this mostly obsolete experience of seeing a movie from the discomfort of your car. The song showcases subtle musical technicality set to some pretty lame lyrics. This next cut is our favorite recording session, which offers a bunch of outtakes and studio goofiness. There's really not much to say about this, but it is interesting to hear the boys interacting. The final track on the original LP is Don't Back Down. Now this closing number represents the group's final song, with a surfing theme. It's as if the band was closing out an era with this one. Now, despite a calculated shift from surf music, the Beach Boys would always be associated with surf rock and beach rock or what have you. If they were really trying to remove the surf image from their brand, they should have considered choosing a name that doesn't have the word beach in it. But nonetheless, here it is, Don't Back Down. All right, I know many of you like when I do this. We did it. We made it to the end of the record. And guess what? We are better for it. So lift the record off of the player and put the record back in its jacket and back on the shelf. And in conclusion, all summer long was still poppy and marketable to bleach blonde teens everywhere. However, hidden in what could have easily been considered frivolous commercial fluff, are some remarkable harmonies and orchestration characteristics from the group's true genius, Brian Wilson. And as previously mentioned, the album was a success, charting at number four on the U.S. Billboard charts. So following the release of All Summer Long, the Beach Boys did change direction and they released their two most creative efforts, as I mentioned earlier. The first was the album Today from 1965, and then the masterpiece Pet Sounds from 1966. Now, determined to match the success and creativity of Pet Sounds, Brian Wilson went to work on a follow-up album called Smile. During this time, his mental state worsened, and it was heightened by addiction. The album cost the studio and the Beach Boys a ton of money, and was held from release. By 1967, the Beach Boys fan base was split into two, with some favoring Brian's more creative efforts and others wishing to return to their earlier sound. That year, the group released the more simplified album, Smiley Smile, which failed to chart higher than number 41 in the US, and then they quickly countered the disappointment with a soul-influenced album called Wild Honey, 1967. This sold better, but still showed a decline in the group's popularity. Moving into the next several decades, some form of the Beach Boys continue to persevere through many issues and tragedies, including the negative press surrounding Dennis's friendship with murderer Charles Manson, Brian Wilson's mental collapse and hospitalization, Stephen's firing, 
Dennis's death at age 39 from drowning, Carl's death at age 51, cancer, and then Al Jardine's resignation, who then began touring under the name Beach Boys without permission. Then there was Brian Wilson's firing, a multitude of lawsuits, and several failed albums. Some hits were thrown in. There was an induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and a successful touring schedule did allow the Beach Boys to work for over 60 years. Okay, thanks. Thanks for listening to the podcast. If you like what you've heard and want to learn more about the album or the show, go to the website, 30albumsfor30years.com. Also join our social media, tell people about the show. It's going well, but we can always use more listeners for sure. And also check out the book, The History of American Music, 1750 through 1950, an origin story. And that is available from Kendall Hunt Publishers. Now, if you can hang out, you got time and check out a little bit of bonus content. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around for the J Plays bonus section. That was cool of you to, to hang in there. Uh, in this section, I usually take a song from the album and reinterpret it. Uh, the obvious choice was I Get Around being the album's biggest hit. So my concept um, on this one was to sort of pay tribute to Brian Wilson's uh, unique way of layering uh, different instruments. So I put a, a, a decent amount of tracks on this. You'll hear some slide guitar at, at points and you'll hear uh, the bass doubling the melody and just uh, a bunch of different little little things um, that you can listen for. And then uh, I wanted to sort of keep a beachy kind of a feel. So I put a little bit of a reggae groove on there with a drum beat that's kind of a quasi hip hop kind of thing. So this was a fun one to do. Uh, again, these are just home recordings that I do, um, and I hope you enjoy my version of I Get Around. Mm-hmm. 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 